Today on Network Africa, the Democratic Republic of Congo boils over calls for President Joseph Kabila to step down. President Mohamed Buhari is in New York attending the 71st session of the UN General Assembly where he is set to bring to the fore issues surrounding the Lake Chad Basin. Plus, South Sudan's ousted Vice President Rick Machar is on his way to South Africa to take refuge. Hello everyone, I am Visi Adibaya, welcoming our viewers here in Lagos where it's pouring outside and our viewers around the world. Let's begin with a review of major stories on the continent this weekend. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Nigeria, Geoffrey Oyema, says the government is making every effort to find and bring home the 218 Chibok girls kidnapped. And I think we, we, we have to be careful um, so that it does not appear as if some lives, you know, matter more than others, you know. We, we have to get all the children back um, that have been uh, kidnapped by, by Boko Haram. It's easy when you have military um, um, far away in remote areas and um, engaging with uh, enemies that have absolutely no scruples uh, whatsoever. And, um, and in liberated areas, um, we are taking steps to as quickly as possible get into place civilian uh, law uh, enforcement people the police uh, and so forth and moving the military out and we believe that this will to a very large extent um, first of all give confidence uh, to the returning um, victims uh, and, and, and others and and ensure that um, the contact is not the military and and the civilian in addition, he also noted that over 2 million people are displaced internally in Nigeria and over 60,000 to 70,000 refugees are in neighboring countries. Elsewhere, a new video was released by the humanitarian organization Médecins Sans Frontières showing hundreds of migrants celebrating as they are brought to safety from rubber dinghies in the Mediterranean. A total of 355 migrants were rescued in at least 16 operations and taken to the MSF rescue vessel Dignity One. Amongst the rescued migrants were several women, children and a less than a month old baby. According to one of the rescuers, the migrants came from more than 20 countries. In a tweet, the humanitarian organization shares a video on how a female migrant speaks of her time in Libya. Anybody they catch or they see that is running away from there, they will return the person to their country to, for penalty. So when the baby was crying, they traced the baby and when they see that it's Nigerians, that we are not Arab like that, they return the boats to Libya and not only return the boat, they take everybody to prison. I can't leave the baby there and the situation there is very bad. They don't even care for baby, they don't even send for babies. In fact, I don't know how their life is. So I have to run away with the baby for the safety of me and the baby. The migrants sang and clapped as land appeared in the horizon. The Dignity One later docked in the Italian port of Messina, where the migrants disembarked. In July 2016, more than 25,000 migrants arrived in Italy, 12% more than last year. Finally, around 10 people have been killed in northern Mali in fighting between a pro-government militia and a rebel coalition dominated by ethnic Tuaregs. A clash between Gatia and the Tuareg separatist coordination of Azawad movements shows the instability of a UN-backed deal signed last year between the government 
and northern armed groups meant to end the cycle of uprisings. The peace deal was intended to ease long-standing tension in the north and allow the army to concentrate on fighting jihadist groups uprising in 2012 and seize northern Mali until a French-led intervention drove them back a year later. Over now to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where demonstrations are holding across the country in calls for President Joseph Kabila to step down. It's chaos in the capital, Kinshasa, where protesters have barricaded and torched cars in one of the main roads. Elections are supposed to be holding soon, but officials and the government say they may have to be delayed because of difficulties in organizing them. The opposition says the polls are being delayed to so the president can remain in power beyond his two-term limit. Since the protests have turned violent, police have arrested at least 10 people, though hundreds more remain in the streets. Schools are right now closed, especially in the capital, and those not involved in the protests are stuck in their homes as those on the streets demand a precise election timetable. Legal practitioner Chukwe Mika Eze joins us now to discuss the situation. Mr. Eze, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, do the protesters have a point here, or could they have explored other options of expressing their grievances other than heading to the streets? I think uh, Kabila does not deserve any other option. The, the, the Congolese people saw it coming. Uh, Kabila knew all along that uh, he will be leaving uh, his second term on 20th December 2016 and made no preparation for the election. The United Nations organization gave him all the signs. He refused to take the signs. He was busy chasing after the opposition. And now just uh, two months to the date of actual election, is coming up uh, to use the Electoral Commission to propose for uh, extension of his tenure indirectly, though he's asking for an interim government, but it is not clear whether it's the work that we have the interim government. So he wants to extend his tenure to 2018, claiming that voter registration will be reviewed up to July 2017. So. Kabila needs to be extension, and he is the architect of the current crisis in the, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, every time elections are postponed in Africa, there's the likelihood of polls being tampered with. But do you think the Electoral Commission has credible reason to move the polls? I think uh, the elect Africa, Africa has given a very bad example when it comes to elections. You should recall where they are coming from. This year, states that were under influence of dictatorial leaders for so many years before the wind of democracy blew and influenced them to allow. So they are still alien to elections. They, they, they are refusing change. And other commissions in non speaking countries are tied to the government. So it is what the government says that they do. And it was the government that earlier called for dialogue, national dialogue. So the mass courage had earlier shown its way before the Electoral Commission happened. Two days ago on Saturday, the Constitutional Court in DRC for postponement of this election. So the government all along, not just in Democratic Republic of Congo, you recall in Congo, then it's Sasson manipulated the situation there. Uh, even in the not too distant one, Burundi, you are aware of what happened. So, though Burundi is not an uh, English speaker, sorry, it's not French speaker, colonized by France, but it was colonized by Burundi. Okay. The Democratic Republic of Congo was colonized by okay. uh, Belgium. Sorry. Belgium right. colonized the Democratic. Rwanda, Burundi. All these countries speak French. So they behave just like countries colonized by France. All of them have their, all their electoral commissions have their apron strings tied to the government. So it is only what the government wants and what the government does 
that the Electoral Commission... All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Eze, for sharing your thoughts on that issue.